A large storm will be coming to the United States over the next few days, bringing the return of significant severe weather, which includes the threat of damaging winds, large hail, and tornadoes. Additionally, there is a chance of seeing northern lights across a large chunk of the United States tonight because of a geomagnetic storm. So in today's forecast, we are going to break down exactly what you need to know about the weather that will be impacting the United States over the next seven days. And we'll begin with what's happening across the country today, and things are on the quieter side of things for this beautiful Sunday. The only thing that's really happening is that we have a little bit of convection that's been spurring off here across the Dixie Alley in Texas, which could bring an isolated threat of severe weather throughout the afternoon and evening hours on Sunday. And then back over in the Great Lakes, the Northeast, we have a large low pressure system that is spinning back over in Maine. And this is actually bringing a ton of wildfire smoke out of Canada, which is making things very hazy. And that is also disrupting air quality. And over the next few days, we are expecting the wildfire smoke to continue to fill the skies across much of the Great Plains the Ohio Valley and the Northeast. Even as we go into Monday, we are expecting a large plume of smoke to sit right over the Great Lakes in the Ohio Valley. So be ready for poor air quality. And if you have any respiratory issues, this could cause some problems throughout the daytime on Monday, even perhaps into Tuesday. On top of that, there's also a chance for a major geomagnetic storm tonight, and this could bring northern lights to a large chunk of the United States. Right now, the thinking is that these northern lights will be mainly visible up here in the northern plains back into New England and perhaps the Pacific Northwest. West, but the northern lights actually arrived about eight hours earlier than expected or forecasted, and we actually had northern lights in the Pacific Northwest this morning. So it's unknown if we will see northern lights at this point across the vast majority of the United States. But if this geomagnetic storm reintensifies, we could see northern lights visible even on phones and cameras as far south as areas like Texas, Oklahoma, and back through the southeast. So stay tuned to our Twitter and Facebook pages at Max Velocity WX. We'll be posting updates this evening if northern lights are going to be visible in these areas. Now we do have a long stretch of severe weather ahead over the next few days and it all begins today with a slight risk of severe weather in place in parts of Texas and by the time you're watching this forecast there are likely already severe storms ongoing but the main concern generally is going to be very large hail additionally it may be an isolated tornado or two we also have four other marginal threats of severe weather across the United States but for the most part it's just going to be isolated severe weather in those regions one of the biggest concerns once again for today will be very large hail anywhere from about Houston Texas back towards Dallas Dallas Fort Worth. There is a low chance for an isolated tornado or two this afternoon and evening. And if for some reason we do actually have a bit more of a significant threat of severe weather later today, we might go live. So make sure you are subscribed to the channel. As we go into Monday, our risk of severe weather will become more organized. We are expecting a, a potential, at least for a low end severe weather outbreak on Monday. Right now, there is a large slight risk of severe weather that expands from southwest Minnesota back into the Texas and Oklahoma panhandles. And we also have a marginal threat literally that goes from Canada to Mexico or all hazards of severe weather will be on the table, but I think the greatest concern across the board for tomorrow will be damaging winds in addition to some large hail in these regions. There is a low chance for an isolated tornado near our surface low, which will be back over in southwest Nebraska, northwest Kansas, and northeastern Colorado. At this time, this does not appear to be anything too crazy other than hail and wind, but again, maybe a couple of tornadoes being a possibility. I wouldn't be surprised if we got an isolated tornado a little bit further down to the south, but that is going to be contingent on there being enough low-level moisture, which for right now it looks like it's going to be relatively dry in this area despite there being a lot of instability so as long as it's dry enough we probably will not see much in the way of a tornado threat but keep an eye on tomorrow if for some reason the dew points are higher than forecasted we definitely could have a few problems down there as we go into tuesday we got a huge risk of severe weather it's a very thin and narrow corridor anywhere from the great lakes back into texas all hazards of severe weather will again be on the table on tuesday and i do think our tornado threat will at least be slightly more elevated on tuesday additionally we are expecting basically widespread thunderstorm activity anywhere from Dallas Fort Worth all the way back up into the upper peninsula of Michigan so again make sure that you're staying weather aware on Tuesday this looks like it'll probably be almost an all-day event we'll have multiple rounds of thunderstorms in this region and with all that said there is a good chance they'll be live on Tuesday covering this threat of severe weather so make sure you're subscribed to the channel and click the bell icon so you're notified if we do go live as we go into Wednesday and Thursday I think severe weather is gonna become a lot more isolated I'd be keeping an eye on the Northeast and the Ohio Valley on Wednesday and then back over in the Southern Plains a re-sparking of severe weather. Additionally, Friday and Saturday, which we'll talk more about this here in a second, I do think there's a better chance of significant severe weather across parts of the central and southern plains. So definitely keep an eye to the skies later into the work week if you're back over in the southern plains. Now, Tuesday's severe weather event is a little bit more tricky to forecast because it's going to depend a lot on what happens during the morning hours with our convection that's left over from Monday. But generally speaking across the Midwest, I'm not expecting anything too crazy right now in the Midwest. I think isolated large hail and damaging winds will be our main concerns. There could be an ice 
isolated spin up tornado somewhere in here but i think overall we're not talking about anything too crazy further down to the south into parts of missouri and also back over in the central plains it's very different i think those areas are going to see more significant severe weather but if you're in the midwest this right here would be what we're watching for going into tuesday evening we may see a line of storms capable of damaging winds and maybe embedded tornadoes so i'll have to keep an eye on that if you're back over in parts of illinois or even back over into missouri this is what it looks like throughout the morning hours on tuesday across the central plains a lot of scattered showers and thunderstorms out there this will help to stabilize the atmosphere some but again if this convection can clear out fast enough we could have a more robust threat of severe weather on tuesday right now the rufus model here is showing that we could see a line of thunderstorms or even just a bunch of supercells that fire all near each other on tuesday right around and just after lunchtime just to the south of kansas city and also back through oklahoma city where all hazards of severe weather would be on the table and i do think on tuesday the most significant severe weather will likely lie in this region here which is mostly central missouri back into the ozarks and into central oklahoma eventually by around four to five o'clock in the afternoon we got two different clusters of storms ongoing we'll probably actually have more than two at least this model showing two but there will probably be multiple clusters of storms that are ongoing throughout the afternoon hours with all hazards being possible but i think damaging winds and hail will be the greatest concern out of this event if we have any discrete convection definitely some more tornadoes will be a possibility as we go into the evening hours storms will continue it'll be pretty messy out there a lot of rain as well flash flooding will likely become a pretty big concern as well with training storms in this region now, if you're back over in the southern plains there will be plenty of showers and thunderstorms out there during the mid to late afternoon and early evening storms will be approaching the dallas fort worth area across much of north texas during the mid to late evening into the overnight hours and eventually into wednesday morning those storms will be falling apart and then wednesday will likely be a little bit more active again but i think overall on wednesday for those in the southern plains we're talking about mesoscale features that'll help to amplify a few supercells with mainly large hail and damaging winds tornado threat should stay low for most of the southern plains now beyond wednesday the threat of severe weather is going to continue with a very active weather pattern this is what our jet stream looks like right now we got a big dip in the jet stream over the pacific northwest and then a couple of little short wave troughs that are right underneath that that are going to continue to bring the threat of severe weather over multiple days this week we are expecting severe weather literally every single day and most days will at least be a slight risk of severe weather i do not see there at least being scattered severe weather on any given day this week i do think thursday and friday do look a little bit more concerning because we're going to have a slightly more amplified shortwave trough moving over the rockies confidence is still somewhat low in this but i do think a more robust threat of severe weather will be possible thursday and friday especially in the central and southern plains and then by the weekend i think our jet stream is going to become a little bit more zonal which means it should be a bit more flat but if we have any shortwave trough still going by the weekend severe weather may continue and a lot of models and a lot of guidance right now with our ensembles are indicating that friday saturday could be slightly bigger days and in addition to thursday so we have to keep an eye on those three days in particular i think for the next four or five days there's no really slam dunk severe weather or tornado outbreak in the near future but severe weather will be possible every single day and there definitely could be some dangerous storms out there let's put this into more simplistic terms with the future radar this is what it looks like on wednesday scattered showers and thunderstorms will continue across many areas from the great plains back into the northeast i'm not expecting anything that organized on wednesday for severe weather i think the northeast and as well as the ohio valley we could see a few isolated severe storms and then a slightly more organized threat of severe weather may take place in the high plains on wednesday thursday looks a little bit more dangerous we could have a slightly more amplified trough that could bring a slightly more significant threat of severe weather from nebraska and south dakota back into west and central texas with all hazards of severe weather being on the table into friday right now the gfs model is indicating that trough moving rapidly off to the east towards the great lakes could have some scattered severe weather stretching from oklahoma back towards lake erie and then on saturday this is where things become a lot more uncertain but i think this active weather pattern is going to continue i do think generally though anything beyond thursday of this week looks to be a lot more mesoscale rather than a low pressure system like synoptic scale so a lot of our mesoscale days again can be significant it's just a matter of what the ingredients look like on the day of which makes it very difficult to forecast stuff like that five plus days in advance so we don't necessarily know what's going to happen yet really beyond friday or saturday but i do think it is going to stay very active with multiple shots of severe weather especially in more localized areas i also want to talk briefly about the chance of a tropical storm or hurricane as we go into the middle of june there is still a low chance that something forms in the caribbean sea or in the gulf as we go into the middle of june sometime around june 9th to june 14th or so it is still very uncertain what's going to happen the gfs model has been spewing out a hurricane almost every single run here for the last several days but there are no other models that are showing this right now so i do want to point that out that this probably will not happen especially to this extent but i do think there's still a low chance of something tropical going into the gulf sometime over the next two weeks so definitely something to stay weather aware about if you're back over along the gulf coast and speaking of hurricanes the noa has released their hurricane outlook for the 2025 hurricane season 
season, which again begins on June 1st. And there's about a 60% chance right now that we'll be having an above average season and then about a 30% chance of an around normal season. So we will likely see multiple major hurricanes again, whether those will hit the United States, we have absolutely no clue. With that said, I would anticipate that this season will be active across the Atlantic Ocean. And as always, thank you all so much for watching today's forecast. If you are new to the channel, make sure to subscribe down below. I'll have another video tomorrow talking all about the upcoming severe weather, way more in detail. So make sure you are subscribed and click the bell icon so you're notified with the latest updates.